her father's mm-hmm. and talking about the father principle. Remember, the father and the mother principles work together. I know some people like to see it as a fight, but it's a joint effort working together. Creating our life, the father is a divine ideas from the formless realm, and the mother opens to receive those ideas, manifest them on earth as it is in heaven, the realm of divine ideas. And last week we stressed two main principles. Life is consciousness, oh darn, <laughs> and the wonderful law of mind action, that our thoughts go out with creative power. And the daily word that Valerie read before said so beautifully, I hold the key to life through my consciousness and the creative power of my words. Whatever I hold in thought, whatever thoughts I connect with in my divine nature, in other words, only the thoughts that are in harmony with the divine presence have that real creative power. Others fall by the wayside, thank God, or we'd all be in trouble. <laughs> we demonstrate in our life. And I want to clear up some things because last week, I think there was a bit of a misunderstanding of something I said. And that is, in unity, when we talk about our thoughts create, and our thoughts do have creative power, but it's much more complicated. And I think when I stressed that last week, it stirred up some metaphysical guilt trips. Anybody here looking at your life and thinking, oh my God, I created that? You know, we all go through that. But the ability to create may mean accepting a bit of responsibility, but it doesn't mean guilt. In unity, we have a guilt-free zone. When you enter that door, this is a guilt-free zone. Got that? We don't look back on guilt at what has happened to us, but the power that we have to overcome. Oh, now I know, with these Father principles, I have the power to overcome and to heal some of this. Every one of us in here has had challenges in life. You tell me yours, I'll tell you mine. We'll be here all day, won't we? Things that, and nobody, nobody ever wakes up in the morning and says, I think I'm going to have a tragedy today, doesn't that sound good? <laughs> I think I'm going to do something really awful today and it's going to hurt me so bad that I'm going to suffer and enjoy it. Anybody here ever wake up and think that thought? <laughs> so then why do these things happen to us? We're going to look at that today and clear up that guilt before we go into some of the other Father Principles. So the first and the major reason that things happen on this wonderful earth plane is just choosing to incarnate into the collective mass consciousness of fear and separation. Just choosing to come in and be born in this plane of duality makes us vulnerable. We have gone where stuff happens on this universe. We've chosen to come here. We have signed up for the good, the bad, and the ugly just by choosing to be born. And that's why Captain Kirk always said, beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Don't you ever, Michael and I will say that every once in a while, beam me up, you know, get me out of this crazy plane of duality. How did I end up here? The second thing, equally as important, we all came in with an agenda. We don't remember it. We all came in with a sole purpose. And our soul has come here not to have a rosy, fun, everything's wonderful life, but to grow and to strengthen and to learn and expand our consciousness and to experience as much as we can in the process. So that soul growth and that soul expansion, the soul doesn't care so much what we do or how it turns out or whether we succeed, but how much have we grown and learned and expanded and strengthened our soul qualities. We've come here to experience it all, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we've even chosen our parents, our circumstances, and yes, even our limitations. I don't know why I chose to be only five feet tall, and I think I've even shrunk a little since then. But apparently, maybe I thought it'd be less intimidating this way, I don't know, but we've chosen it all. And what we perceive from the human standpoint as, oh, that's bad, the soul sees this, no, 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 this is good, you'll see, you'll see, good, a blessing will come out of this. And so the laws of creation work in harmony with our soul's purpose. Now I've often shared with you, I grew up, my parents taught me how to play cards. You don't ever want to play poker with me. <laughs> my parents taught me how to play cards. And you ever notice in playing cards, you have to play the 
the, the hand you're dealt with, right? And it's the same with life, except for one thing that we forgot. In life, our soul shuffled the cards. Our soul decided what hand would be good for us in this particular lifetime. You know, I don't know about you, but I believe we have many lifetimes. And in this particular lifetime, five feet tall seemed to be the right thing. I don't know why. <laughs> it's not what I would have chosen in reality, but up there. On the other hand, and this is my favorite, on the other hand, was it Freud that says sometimes a cigar is just a cigar? <laughs> sometimes you're on this earth plane and stuff just happened. Not my fault, it just happened. Because I chose to be born into this plane of duality where stuff happened. The fourth thing is we're all affected by collective consciousness. Are we not affected by everyone and everybody's beliefs around us? And we yes. go out in the world and the mass consciousness influences us. In other words, if the collective believes that sugar and white flour is bad for you, <laughs> guess what? Sugar and white flour will be bad for you. Now, I didn't make that one up, and I did not create cellulite. <laughs> Whoever is thinking that thought of cellulite, would you please stop? Because it's affecting me. And the collective right now, everything's about germs. Gosh, I walked into the bank last week, and in the line, in the bank, they had this little stand for these wipes to wipe your hands off to kill the germs, and I thought, you know, I refuse to get into that fear around germs that people have. Now, I grew up on farm. Dirt is our friend. Everybody repeat, dirt is our friend. We grew our food in the dirt. What is this germ phobia? It drives me nuts. The collective has a belief that aging is inevitable. So it is. Who's ever believing that one? Please stop because it's affecting me. Right? We're all together in this collective belief system. Good news, though. Good news. It's not about the guilt. It's okay. Now that we're in this, we can use these principles to rise above it. So now we can rise above all that guilt and coulda, woulda, shoulda. Four parts to this. The first one is know your union with God, not just intellectually, but really know and feel your union with God. The second one is to let go of fear, and fear manifests in many ways. You may think you're not in fear, but it manifests in so many ways. The third one is release all blocks to love's presence, every single one. And the fourth one is use these principles to rise above whatever has been showing up in your life. So know your union with God. Release what? All fear. And then release the blocks to love's presence and use the principles that we teach to rise above everything in your life. So today, let's look at some more Father principles. Most of you have probably seen the movie The Secret years ago. How many have seen the movie The Secret? It's been a long time. And then people had good and bad reactions to this. First of all, it was all about the law of attraction. We are magnets for what we believe, think, feel, and every moment we're magnets for those experiences. Life is consciousness. Life attracts life. And sometimes opposites attract as well. We're magnets. And some people are disappointed because they've had some thoughts that haven't happened. And they thought, well, I had the thought of it. Why didn't it happen? For instance, how many in here have had the thought of winning the lottery? <laughs> One of us should have won the lottery by now. <laughs> because I bet everybody in here has had that thought of winning the lottery. Why hasn't it happened? Okay, I call this the law of oops. The law of oops. The first part of that is that all laws have to work together. Yes, the law of attraction works, but it has to work with all the other laws like the law of forgiveness, the law of cause and effect, all the other ones. All laws have to be in harmony with our soul's purpose. Now, I love you all, but I hate to say it, if I won the lottery, I'm sorry, I'd be out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and my soul knows it's not that I need to teach you this stuff, I need to keep hearing it and talking about it over and over again, so I get it deeper and deeper. Every time I teach this stuff, I learn it in a deeper way. I need to be here. 
And the third thing is, yes, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind, but that includes the subconscious. <laughs> the subconscious. The law of what? Oops. Oops. What's in your subconscious? We're constantly sending double messages to the universe. Yeah, I want to win the lottery, but maybe I have a belief in this lack of limitation that I don't deserve more, I'm not worthy of more. How could it happen then? Do you desire a relationship, but maybe you don't trust men or women? Do you desire healing, but are you still filled with resentment? How's that going to happen? Do you have thoughts of abundance, but you don't want to forgive? How could that happen then? See how all the laws work together. They have to all be in alignment with truth and love. Have you got the thought and the desire for success, but a subconscious state of feeling unworthy? The law of oops, oops. I do know three things. You can never judge yourself or another person for what you've either created or seen somebody else create. A metaphysical guilt trip is when we either say to ourselves or to someone else, what in you created that? We never do that here at Unity. We don't know the higher soul purpose and we don't realize there is a blessing in everything. Even the most horrendous things can carry a blessing. And it's all here to heal and to strengthen. So if we want to heal, we don't go to the outer. We have to heal where first? Yes. Consciousness. Life is consciousness. And the law of correspondence is as within, so without. As above, so below. What's in my face is also in me. I don't like that one either. Let's all say boo together. Boo! boo. boo. <laughs> don't like that one. <laughs> the third thing is everything has to be in alignment with truth and love. If we're trying to work something on this earth plane, it is totally out of alignment with truth and love. It's just not going to have sustaining quality. We may be able to do it for a while. So any blocks to love's presence have to be removed, and that includes forgiveness. I don't like that one either. Together, <laughs> forgiveness doesn't condone what's happened. It frees you up so that love can flow through you again, freely. Let's talk about the law of forgiveness because that's such a big one. There's no, great, no greater block to love's presence than unforgiveness. And it shows up in subtle ways. That's what Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, every night he did 15 minutes of prayer just on forgiveness. And if he had the slightest irritation throughout the day, he forgave. The slightest anger or resentment, the slightest, he forgave for 15 minutes every night. And man, he was a mystic, but look at the rest of us. We'd probably, I'd probably spend an hour on mine <laughs> if he spent 15 minutes. He said, if you're in debt, who are you holding in debt to you? Forgive. Open up those blocks. One sweet affirmation just won't cut it. Most of us have buried blocks, buried subconscious beliefs that have to be exhumed and released and freed. All that stuck energy has to move. And so much of what happens to us that triggers us, it's so that stuck energy can move and get triggered and be cleared. And that's why the next law is my favorite and some people just can't stand it. The law of surrender. I love the law of surrender. It doesn't mean giving up. It doesn't mean giving in to an abuser. It means letting go of the struggle, the effort, the control. Trying to fix it, trying to do it yourself. Anybody here do any of those things? Uh -uh. No. <laughs> surrender. Get out of the way. Spirit can't move through that stuck energy unless you let go. And then spirit can move in. I double dog dare you. If you're in a stuck place in consciousness, let go and let God. Let it go. Now, another one that people don't always like. The law of giving and receiving is a natural, universal principle. And we have to have a balance of both. Some people are great givers but cannot receive. I believe a lot of times at the end of life, people are forced to be in a situation where they're having to rely on others to give that soul time to learn to receive. We have to be able to give and receive in balance. 
Other people do controlled giving, but without the law of love, that doesn't work either. Freely, give and receive freely. And if a, there's a belief or fear of lack, people hold on and shut the flow off. Jesus said, give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will be poured into your lap for the measure you give will be measured to you. Wow, that universal flow. And here I like to tell the difference between a rule and a law. A rule and a natural law of the universe. Big difference. A rule is a man-made rule. Man-made has had all these rules and you do this or else. You have to do this or else. A natural law of the universe is simply a natural thing that happens. It's the same for everyone. It's always at work. Everyone's affected by it even if you don't believe in it. And it's your choice whether to use that natural law to your advantage. See the difference between a rule, man may do this or else, and a natural law that just works in the universe all the time, and it's your choice whether or not to do this. And that's why religious organizations often talk about tithing. Tithing is 10% of giving. Breathe, breathe, don't be uncomfortable, breathe, breathe. <laughs> Traditional churches have rules. You have to give 10%. That's a rule or you can't be here. We don't have that rule. In unity, we say there's a natural law of the universe and 10% is the amount that tips the scales for the flow to open within you. And then it's your choice. Do you want to use the law or not? It's your choice. So rule or natural law, one is forced on you, one is your choice. And unity believes in the law of tithing, but we don't force it. It's not charity. It's giving to the source of your spiritual nourishment. Because when you do that, you're putting your faith in the unseen Father principle, the unseen spirit, rather than the world of appearances. It's not magic. It's the number it takes to tip the scale. So I double dog dare you. It works. Not a rule only a law, a natural law. So everybody breathe, everybody breathe. Now the next law is the power of prayer. And that is the best use for the law of mind action. The first law is the thought, law of mind action. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. So when we pray, we send out those thoughts of what we desire. And in unity, we pray words of truth, not what we, oh God, please don't let this happen. But yes, we call it in through the thoughts. And then the next law is speaking the word. Speaking the word and the vibration of our word goes out and it doesn't return until it has accomplished what it is set to do. If it is in alignment with truth and love and for the highest good of all. And then Jesus added to that, law of prayer, to pray believing, pray with faith, pray believing. What do you have faith in? Your fear or the Father principle, the law, the natural laws that will come and rush to fill that space once you've drawn it into you. And another part of the law of prayer, I call it, these are my own words, not unities, the law of touching the hem of the garment. From the biblical story of the woman who touched the hem of Jesus' garment and the healing <clears throat> force flew out of him and into her and healed her. I call that the law of centering and connecting with the one presence, the one power within, and immediately our good flows to us through our thoughts, our words, our imagination. The law of touching the hem of the garment, the law of connecting. There is only one presence, one power. And once we're truly aware of that, not just in our mind, but truly get that, we have access to all that is needed through natural law. Would you repeat with me? In union with God, I create a grace-filled life. Together, in union with God, I create a grace-filled life. One more time. In union with God, I create a grace-filled life. And let's just speak with that for a while. In prayer.
prayerful surrender, we rest once more. Without effort, without struggle, it's simply as the book we're going to study says, falling into grace, allowing divine love to take us there. There is no effort, there is no struggle, only in aligning with love and truth. With faith, with confidence, with courage, we walk through this life effortlessly, confident. Father principle, mother principle, working together to manifest on earth as it is in heaven, our highest soul purpose. We trust it, we surrender to it, and we live each day in joy as we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. 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 Please join us in singing Seek Ye First. Sing the Holy Spirit.